Okay, now that we've finished the first section, we're going to head on into web views because now we have a basic understanding of how to do the client to server communication. So that means that we get to do the more complicated stuff now. So don't be intimidated by this too much. It takes a little bit to grasp. You got to do a little bit of practice, but you'll eventually get to the point where you fully understand this. Okay, so Alt V has something called a web view. What is a web view? Well, it's basically a browser that is embedded inside of the client itself. So in order to demonstrate that to you, we actually need to show that to you. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna write a small command that'll show us, I don't know, some, some web page. So we're gonna do register CMD, okay? We're gonna call this um, load page. And we'll pass the player through here, and we're going to do an ultimate client, and then we're going to pass the player, and then we're going to do the web view of uh, just load, okay? So we're going to take this right here, and we're going to copy that, head over to the client side, and we're going to do an alt on server, and then we're going to go ahead and pass this specific event here, like that, and then we're going to extend the function here, and then we're going to load the web page. So when we do load page as a command, it will load a web page. So in order to load a web page, we need a web view. So we're going to do a constant. We're going to call it web view, and we're going to get it, and we're going to call it new alt dot web view. Okay, capital W, capital V, and then we're going to give it a um, a simple path. Okay, so for an external resource, such as Google, we just put in the address. And then we do webview.focus to gain focus of the webview so that we can interact with it. And then we need to show a cursor as well. So if we do alt.showcursor, we set that to true, and we're ready. So if we reload the page and we head on over to the reconnect, and then we run our command called load page. We should be able to access Google. So we're gonna do load page and there we are. We have Google and we can type in it and do everything else inside of Alt-V with this. But you're probably thinking, what's the point of accessing Google? Well, we don't actually use it to access Google a majority of the time. We actually use it to draw various HTML pages. So let's write an HTML page. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna make a folder. We're gonna call it HTML inside of the client side. And the first thing that we're gonna create inside is gonna be called index.html. Okay. And we're gonna set up a HTML document. So if you don't know HTML, this is basically what you need to know. You need a, a HTML wrapper. You need a head wrapper. And then you need a body wrapper, okay? And we're just gonna go ahead and indent some of this stuff so it looks a little cleaner. There we go. And then we're just gonna put a little H1 here that says, hello world. Okay, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and try and load that. So the only thing that's a little bit different is the resource path, okay? So you do still have to put HTTP in here, but instead, we do resource slash client slash HTML index dot HTML. And then we're just going to run that and we're going to see if that loads for us. So let's do a reconnect here. And there we are, and we'll do load page. And as you can see in the top left, we have hello world. And this is something we can interact with and it's kind of there. So the next step is, well, what can we do to maybe close this web view? Because we have it open and there's no way for us to inherently close it. So there's a lot of different options we can take but one of the ones that I'm going to show you is a very basic design pattern that I use 
pretty consistently across the board. So at the top of the client, we're actually going to make something called web view. We're not going to give it any value and it's just going to be undefined. Now what we're going to do, <clears throat> if the web view is not defined, when we load, when we do this command to load the page, we are going to assign the page to that. Okay. So now this web view is being assigned to this variable up here. And then we're going to go ahead and do a web view focus because it already shows up. And then we can do show cursor. But if we want to close it, that's where things get a little bit more interesting. So we've already done the server to client interaction, just calling client to server. But there's one more type of interaction that we are missing. This is the client to web view and web view to client interaction. This is probably the most confusing interaction that gets every single person that I've come across with about how to interact with web views. It's a very weird procedure, but it's basically the same. So the best way that I can explain it is you'd have to emit an event directly to the web view. And that is through doing something like web view dot emit. But let's go ahead and handle the on event first. So when an event gets emitted from the web view, this is how we will be handling it. So if we do web view on, and we're going to call this close web view. Okay. And then we need to bind it to a function, a callback function or anything of the sort. And the easiest way to do that is I'm going to make a function down here and I'm going to call it basically the same thing, close web view. Okay, and then we're just going to go up here, type in close web view, but we don't add we don't add our parentheses. We just make it directly call this function. This or basically this function gets executed when this is called. So think of it like this: when this is getting called, it tacks on this to run the function. Okay, but in that regard, we need to close the web view. So first thing we're going to do, alt show cursor, we're going to set that to false. So the cursor goes away. The next thing we're going to do, we're just going to do web view dot destroy. And then we're going to do web view equals undefined. So what is happening here is that when we call the function from the browser to close the web view, it calls this function from here to here. So it stops showing the cursor, it destroys the web view, and then it sets it to undefined so that the next time that we load the web view, it'll make a new instance of it. Now, now that we have this, our next step is to add this functionality into the browser. So the easiest thing we can do is inside of HTML, we need to give index.html a JavaScript function. So we're going to make something and we're going to call it app.js, not mjs, js. Okay. And inside of index.html, the very bottom, we're going to do script source app.js. Okay. And we're going to do type equals JavaScript. I believe it's JavaScript. I actually can't remember what this is now. <laughs> we'll just try with just that. I imagine that's what it is. <clears throat> and all we need to do is just load that. So inside of app.js, we can verify that it's loading by doing a test or something inside like that. And then we're just going to go ahead and reload. Well, actually, first, I'm going to go to client. And we're going to go ahead and change our spawn time to uh, basically something more instant. So let's head over to client. And instead of the timeout being three and a half seconds, let's just make it 100 milliseconds so we can move a little bit faster with our tutorial. Okay, so if I hit load page, there's our page. If I press F8, I have test. So that means that our little command right here inside of the browser has now logged correctly. So now that we have that, let's add a simple function. So if we do documents, well, actually we'll call it window 
add event listener and we're going to call it um, on or key down I believe yep and then we're going to pass the key here <clears throat> so when we pass the key <clears throat> the key needs to be something like escape I believe so we're just going to use escape in this example then so if we do if key equals escape then we will do if alt in window alt emit alt emit and then we're going to do <clears throat> the function that we called it which is close web view close web view and that's it so let me explain what's happening here in this window we are adding an event listener where whenever we press a key it, this event is called and when this event is called if the key is equal to escape and if alt which is the alt client is in the window which means that if alt is loaded and if somebody like loads this page externally they're not going to have alt so in game we have to make sure that alt exists and if it doesn't we can say that um, closing window okay so this would be something to test on client side. So I guess to give you a general example of that, let me open this up in the browser. Okay, and if I hit F12 and I press escape, it looks like we got nothing there, which is very interesting. So let's go ahead and do a little debugging real quick. So we're gonna, do, we're gonna console log this key like that, refresh the page. And it looks like we got the keyboard event. Oh, and it's key.key, .key, actually. So instead of calling this key, let's call this e. And then we'll do e.key, just like that. And this is why we need to debug, because sometimes we miss some of these things along the way. It happens to everybody. But uh, now that we have e.escape, now we can confirm this is working by pressing escape. And it says closing window. So now that we have this, <clears throat> we can test it in game. So we're going to save everything, start our server. We're going to do our reconnect. All right, we're back in game. Let's do a load page. Now if I press escape, as you can see, the web view has now gone away. It did bring up the GTA 5 menu, but that's not a big deal. So in that regard, we have now covered one of the major parts of the web view. And in the next one, we're going to talk about how we take data from the server to the client and then display it all the way on the web view.